afternoon, on behalf of God, the High Court, I so much. I would like to extend a very warm welcome to His Excellency, Dr. Haribabu Gambhapati, Honorable Governor of Mizoram, Honorable Mr. Justice Nelson Simon, Judge of the Guwahati High Court, Honorable Mrs. Justice Marley Van Goon, Judge of the Guwahati High Court, Mr. Sila Ramzala, Senior Advocate and Advisor to the Chief Minister of Mizoram, and all other esteemed dignitaries present here this afternoon to celebrate the Platinum Jubilee of Guwahati High Court, Guwahati. First of all, we would like to take a moment in felicitating the dignitaries who have graced this auspicious occasion. I would like to request the dignitaries to kindly stand during their felicitation as and when I call out their names. First, we have the Honorable Governor of Mizoram, His Excellency Dr. Haribabu Kambampati. So please stand. He is to be felicitated by Mrs. Margaret Delvin Sani, Joint Registrar of Guwahati High Court, ISO Bench. Thank you, sir. They are felicitated with Miso Shawl and Platinum Jubilee celebration plates. Next, we have the Honorable Mr. Justice Nelson Silo, Judge of the Guwahati High Court. He is felicitated by Mrs. L. Cross Tawi, Deputy Registrar of Guwahati High Court, his own bench. Thank you, Lordship. May I please request the Honorable Mrs. Justice Marley Van Gogh, Judge of the Guwahati Court, High Court, to kindly stand. She will be felicitated by Mrs. Bobby Dalit Mikmoye, MJS, Civil Judge Come, Judicial Magistrate, First Class. Director General of Police, Mizoram. He will be 
felicitated by Mrs. Lynn Mines, who are the the librarian of God, the High Court, his own page. Senior advocates that we would like to felicitate today. Um, first off, we have Mr. R.C. Thomas, senior advocate. Mr. R.C. Thomas, senior advocate. He will be felicitated by Ms. Evelyn Sangui, Ms. Evelyn Sangui, Superintendent of Guwahati High Court, his own page. Authority and last but not the least, serving 
as the retired officers and staff of the registry of the Romati Temple. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome each and every one of you in the celebration of the Platinum Jubilee of the Gohati High Court, which was established on 5th April 1948. Previously, the Gohati High Court captured the seven sisters, the seven sister states of the Northeast. However, subsequent to the separate High Court for the state of Manipur, Meghalaya and Tripura, today the Gohati High Court exercise jurisdiction over Assam, Nagaland, Mizoram and Arunachal Pradesh. The celebration of the Platinum Jubilee at Gohati High Court principal seat will be from 5th April to 14th April 2023. The Honorable President of India and the Honorable Chief Justice of India will be attending the Platinum Jubilee celebration function on the 7th and the Honorable Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi ji, will be attending the concluding function on 14th April 2023 at Gohati. We are indeed fortunate to have the Governor of Mizoram to grace today's function, organized mainly by the Gohati High Court with full cooperation from the Mizoram Bar Association, District Court and the State Legal Services Authority. The state of Mizoram is indeed very fortunate to have Honorable Dr. Hari Babu Kambampati as the Governor of Mizoram. Because I could make out during a very brief meeting when we had gone to invite him to grace today's uh, function that he truly has the economic development and the welfare of the people of Mizoram in his heart. Our theme today, while we celebrate the Platinum Jubilee, uh, is the challenges and the way forward for the judiciary in Mizoram. Now, the permanent bench of the Gohati High Court was, was established in Aizol on 5th July 1919 and the separation of judiciary from the executive fully happened in the state by the state's notification dated 1st July 2008. At present we have 45 judicial officers and more than 500 advocates who are registered or enrolled in the Mizoram Bar Association. The uh, Mizoram Law College is doing a very good job producing brilliant advocates every year. However, I will not be wrong in saying that judiciary in Mizoram per se is still very young and is yet to grow and develop in all fields. This new district court building was inaugurated very recently, only this year. And we have the inauguration of the new High Court building to look forward to. While the people of Mizoram watch with abated breath, expecting so much from the judiciary. Because ultimately, judiciary is where a person will go for his regression of his grievances, seeking justice when they feel that justice has failed them and sway. Justice can actually be truly said to be done when the three pillars of the society of the constitution that is the legislature, the executive and the judiciary all stand equal, united and strong and join hands with one common goal that is to serve the people of India, to serve the people of Mizoram. And so, in this celebration of the Platinum Jubilee of the Gohati High Court, we who are here today have an important role to play in the delivery of justice to the people. With that, once again, I welcome each and every one of you who are here today in this function and 
we will also be hearing from the uh, senior advocate, Mr. C. Dharam Sawa, who is representing the Mizoram Bar Association, Honorable Mr. Justice Nelson Sayo, and our chief guest, the Honorable Governor of Mizoram, who will also be releasing the souvenir ceremony plate. So as we gather together here, we are one. We are one to serve the people. Each one of us have a part to play. So while we celebrate this Latin Jubilee, let us once again be reminded that we who are gathered here today are actually the cream of the society who are to deliver justice to the people. With that, thank you and Jamie. Thank you, your leadership, for the informative and warm welcome address. Let me now invite Mr. C. Lanonzawa, Senior Advocate and Advisor to the Chief Minister of Mizoram, to deliver a speech. His Excellency, Dr. Hari Babu, Kampampati, Governor of Mizoram, Honorable Mr. Justice Nelson Saito, Judge of Gauti High Court. Honorable Mrs. Justice Mali Banku, Judge of Gauti High Court. Mr. Joseph Joel Denga, Allen Minister, Gauti High Court, Mr. Benz. Mr. Lal Sota, Chairperson, Zoran Bob Director, Mr. Lala Kogu, Chairman, Zoran State Law Commission. Dr. Renu Sharma, Chief Secretary, Government of Zoran. Mr. Divas Chandra Srivastava. DGP, Zoram, Mrs. Anantam Gyadi, Secretary of Law and Judicial Department, Dr. Lalfiya Zwadi, IS, Deputy Commissioner, Mysol, Mr. C. Zoram Chana, Nanet Additional LG, Zoram, the retired judges uh, of the district and session courts, the serving uh, district judges, all members of the judicial service, all, Mizoram, uh, all members of the Mizoram Bar Association. Ladies and gentlemen, today, on this auspicious occasion, I have been given this opportunity to address the gathering, and I'm really grateful to God and to all for allowing me to stand before you for a very short speech. I consider 10 minutes a very short speech. And anyway, <laughs> now on this occasion, this is a seminar organized as a part of the program for celebrating the Platinum Jubilee of the Gauti High Court. The theme of today's seminar being challenges and a way forward for the judiciary in Mizoram. I find it appropriate to recall the history of this great institution which had its beginning 75 years back on the 5th of April 1948 with the growth and progress of this institution, a pristine symbol of democracy. From its beginning till today, we have seen that numerous legal luminaries from its beginning till today, we have seen that those legal luminaries have played their role in the justice delivery system, either from the bench or from the bar. In this connection, it may, it may be noted that amongst the 17 honorable judges of the High Court, of this High Court, who were elevated to the Supreme Court, nine of them, such as Honorable Mr. Justice P.K. Goswami, Honorable Justice Barul Islam, Honorable Mr. Justice K. Sakia, Honorable Mr. Justice Bir Ansaria, Honorable Mr. Justice Ian Nesen Kukan, Honorable Mr. Justice H. K. Selma, Honorable Mr. Justice Dr. M. K. Selma, Honorable Mr. Justice Amitabha Roy, Honorable Mr. Justice Ranjan Gogo. They were all groomed, hewed, and saved in the bar 
and thereafter elevated as judges of this high court. And thereafter as chief justices of different high courts and as judges of the Supreme Court. Special mention may be made of the Honorable Mr. Justice Ranjan Gumoy, who was elevated to the top post of judiciary as Chief Justice of India. It may further be mentioned with great pride that Mizoram Bar, a very young bar, the association of which was established only in the year 1984, with a handful of lawyers, is now having more than 500 members on roll out of which almost 300 are lady advocates in active practice. But the number of advocates joining the bar in Mizoram has been increasing at the rate of 50 or more every year since the last few years. The ISOL bench of this high court was started only on July 5th, 1990 as a permanent bench and it is its third uh, it it year of uh, its existence as of today. Members of the Mizoram Bar Association, in spite of numerous shortcomings, have shown their legal documents in sincerity and dedication in their profession by assisting the Honorable Court in dispensing justice to the litigants. It may be said with sufficient pride that though members of the Mizoram Bar Association may not be the best lawyers but are not less reliable than any other lawyer in the country in assisting the Honorable Court to deliver justice. At this stage, it can be proudly said that the three senior advocates from Mizoram, such as Honorable Mr. Justice D.Y.P., retired as Chief Justice of Agartala High Court, Honorable Mr. Justice Michael Zutan Kumba, and Honorable Mr. Justice Nelson Simon have been elevated and appointed as judges of the Gauti High Court. Honorable Mrs. Justice Mali Van Poon has also been elevated from service as judge of this High Court. The Zoram Bar Association is very proud of the lawsuits. Lawyers across the globe have been instrumental in the lawmaking process as legislators parliamentarians or senators in the respective nations or countries. By this time, there is more public awareness and corresponding demand that lawyers should involve more deeply in the process of lawmaking. However, it is not possible for a lawyer to play such a role when he is fully engaged and dedicated to the cause of his clients. Now, the number of lawyers having crossed 500 in zero. I feel that more lawyers should keep themselves involved in the political system than to seek to confine themselves only in litigation to the cause of the nation as a whole instead of fighting only for individual rights and liberties. For saying this, it should not be construed that no importance should be given to individual rights and liberties. They are important. And the Constitution of India has also given great importance to such rights in the form of fundamental rights. What I mean to propose is that with the increase of the number of lawyers, with the prospect of future increase at the rate of not less than 50 annually, we are now having the luxury of taking up public courts by way of public interest litigation and deeper involvement in the political system. In fact, no other person can be said to be more competent in making the state a welfare state as contemplated under part 4 of the constitution of India than a lawyer who is well instructed in the law of the land. Let me conclude my speech by quoting late Mr. N. A. Palkivala, one of the greatest jurists in India, who in his speech in the first annual conference of the Bar Association of India had said thus, I quote, in a vast democracy like India, many citizens are bound to be undimensional, but no lawyer has any excuse for being undimensional. By his training and equipment, and by his professional competence, he is better qualified than the rest of the citizenry to take an active part 
in the making of laws and the form formulation of public policies. He would be failing this country if he did not do this duty. And by way of this address, I am expanding the theme of today's seminar by stressing and emphasizing the need for the lawyers to participate and play an active role in the making of laws and the formulation of public policies. The invitation is now placed before all well-meaning lawyers present today. However, the choice is yours. Thank you. Speech. Let me now request the Honorable Mr. Justice Nelson Silo, Judge of the Guwahati High Court, for a keynote address. His Excellency Dr. Ali Babu Ramadani, Governor of Mizoram, my sister uh, Justice Mahali Babu, Mr. Silo Ramzar, Advisor to the Chief Minister, and Senior Advocate. Mr. Joel Joseph Dera, which is the Mr. Nelson Sota, Chairperson Mizoram Lok Ayyupa. Mr. Lala Kobo, Chairman Mizoram State Law Commission. Mrs. Renu Sharma, Chief Secretary to the Government of Mizoram. Mr. Devesh Chandra Srivastava, DGP Mizoram. Mrs. Helen Dongani, Secretary of Law and Judicial. Mr. Ronald A. Moya, District and Session Judge, ISO. Mr. Kang Eman Guite, District and Session Judge, Tunde, Judicial District. Dr. Alam Shiat Zwali, uh, Deputy Commissioner, ISO. Mr. R. Ronald Ena, Member Secretary, Mizoram State Legal Service Authority. Mr. Rod Moya, the Senior SP Traffic, Mizoram Police. Judicial officers present today, both retired and serving, office bearers and members of the Mizoram Bar Association, officers and staff of the registry, that is Gohati High Court Isol Bench, officers from the law department, excise and advocates, the police department, information and public relations, and other departments media persons present today and importantly the principal of the law college, Wizard Law College and the students who have come and all the dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon and warm welcome to all of you. I stand here before you because my sister and brother judges have taken the initiative to organize this beautiful function today. I was away in the Nagaland the last two weeks. I just landed up on Sunday. Then I am told that you have to speak to this function. And as everybody knows, especially from Dimba, I am not a good orator as it is. But whatever limited knowledge, my thoughts and what I feel befitting for today, that I will speak today. And uh, my time is not limited. But do not, uh, do not fear. I will not take much time. See, the High Court, Guwahati High Court, as we know as of today, was not like this. It was 75 years back that with the promulgation of the Assam High Court Order 1948, that it came into existence as Assam High Court. And later on, when the state of Nagaland was constituted, then it became the High Court of Assam and Nagaland. And as my other speakers have spoken, with the reorganized reorganization of the Northeastern Area Act 1971, then it became the High Court for all the seven, all the five states, including the Indian Territory of Mizoram and Arunachal Pradesh. And later on, when the Mizoram state, Mizoram attained the statehood along with Arunachal Pradesh in the year 1987, then it became the high court for all these seven states. 
we all debate together for quite some time, till in the month of March 2013, the three states of Meghalaya, Manipur and Tripura came to have its own separate high court and started functioning as such. And today, the four states remain together having a common high court, that is Assam, Nagaland, Mizoram and Arunachal Pradesh. <coughs> So that is how we as judges of the High Court, depending upon the roster prepared by the Chief Justice, travel quite a bit. Every two, three weeks, four weeks, we're either in that state or this state. So in a way, it's very interesting and it's very knowledgeable and it's very refreshing to know things which happen in other parts of the state. And sharing a high, common High Court is a very big thing. We are in fact a very, very big family, as you can say. Now coming back to ISO bench, we have heard the ISO bench was inaugurated by the then Chief Justice of India, Honorable Justice S. B. Mukherjee, in the presence of His Excellency the Governor of Mizoram, Mr. Swaraj Kaushal, and the then Chief Minister, Mr. Nathan Mora, and the Chief Justice of the Guwahati High Court, Mr. K. Rabodi. That was in 1990. And since then, we have been functioning as such. As we know, the High Court is located quite in the distance, precisely 7.5 kilometers from my residence. And knowing the traffic of ISOL, it takes about 40 minutes to reach there. We know the traffic congestion in ISOL uh, is a big worry for everyone. I think everyone should agree. But now, we have this district court building right in the center of the city. And the new high court building coming up. I'm sure things are going to improve. Now, so far as Mizoram is concerned, we have the high court, the outlying bench of the ISO bench of the high court. But in respect of the judiciary and the how uh, disputes are being settled in the entire state, as we all know, earlier we had the uh, Rules for regulation of procedure of officers appointed to administer justice in the Lushai years, 1937. A very long uh, rules in the name. It's popularly known as the Administration of Justice Rules, 1937. Wherein the disputes were settled or decided by the Deputy Commissioner and his assistants. But then this continued for uh, quite some time. And we also have the district council courts since under the sixth chapter of the Constitution of India. But then with the enactment of the Mizoram Civil Courts Act in 2005, things have changed. Although enactment was in 2005, but immediately the act was not given effect to. There were a few details here and there which has to be sorted out. Of course, it will be the knowledge to everyone that these things, the transition cannot happen overnight. So there were a few issues here and there. And even one litigation was filed in the High Court, I remember. I was then the additional advocate in one of those days. We had filed a review petition in file. But later on things settled down, and as Sister Mali had said, in the year 2008, it's a not ready. So since then, the powers to adjudicate over matters have been taken away, and is exclusively done by the judicial magistrates now. So, we have come a long way. And the members, the young members of the bar, perhaps did not realize what situation was then there. Mr. R. C. Thang is there, I forgot to mention his name. He is one of the pioneers of the Mizoram Bar Association, and he was the former, he is the former advocate general for the state of Mizoram as well. He had his place in Guwahati, he used to stay there, station there, and deal with matters. I'm so glad to see him today. He's not been keeping well for a long time. You're most welcome today. I'm so glad to see you. So, the administration set up the how cases are decided at, at sea, a lot of change, a sea change. With the enactment of the Civil Courts Act, the powers were taken away from the District Council Courts. We had the District Council Courts, we had the subordinate District Council Courts. They had functioned at the same time as civil courts as well. But with the enactment of the Civil Courts Act, 
these powers were no longer exercised by them because there was a transition. So from the from the district council days, it has gone now to the it has gone to the city courts. But except for the three autonomous district councils in the south, as we know, Lai, Vara, and Chakman, they still have their own officer and they also still decide cases. And the High Court has the uh, the appellate powers are exercised by the High Court. All those cases are decided by the district council courts come to the High Court. Now, this is for my benefit, in fact, although everyone knows about it, but it's for my benefit. Presently, we have three judicial districts in Mizoram, Aizaw, Unle, and Zampai judicial districts. And the Aizaw judicial district comprises of Aizaw, Policy, Marmit, Serchi, and Saitol district. Saitol district is one of the new addition districts, as we all know. And so far as Dungle judicial district is concerned, there are four districts, that is Dungle, Siaha, Longtai, and Nathiel. Nathiel is also another new district. And of course, we have Champai district, Champai judicial district, comprising of two administrative districts, Champai and Kozal districts. Now, The various courts functioning in these districts, they do not have their own, they did, they did not have their building of their own. Infrastructure wise, we were very dependent on the state, and especially the office of the deputy commissioner, which had generously given rooms, places for the courtrooms to function. Till date, we have this uh, long life district court functioning from the office building of the deputy commissioner. Of course, the building for construction of the separate building for the district judiciary is also there. But at the moment, we are occupying some of the rooms thanks to the deputy commissioner's establishment there. Now, as we see, the judiciary in Mizoram, as we have already heard, is at very young stage. So, first thing what we require is the, the, the infrastructure. The infrastructure as we know, the place where I'm standing, we are all sitting here today, is the new district court building, which has 22 courtrooms. It was inaugurated in December last year, December 17. And in policy, the construction of fast track court building uh, with five courtrooms is currently being undertaken. It commenced on 20th of September last year and the target date of completion is September this year. Next year, I'm sorry, 2024. Then in so far as Serchi is concerned, it has its own building and it was occupied on 10-6-2016. Marmit district the court building commenced, construction of the court building commenced in the year 2010 and it has been occupied since the year 2012. So you can see here, some of the districts have become self-reliant. Then in Saitoa district, there is a new district. The land has been identified, a place called Ruwalun, for establishment of the district court and resident official quarters of the judicial officers. Now the process for getting the issuance of land lease certificate is on and this has been worked out with the state authorities. Now in so far as Dungle district is concerned, we all know that the second largest or the second judicial district next to Aizawl is Dungle. We have a old building there but it is not sufficient. We have been striving a lot, the bench at the bar and all those stakeholders have been striving a lot to have a better place. And it's thanks to the present government. The Council of Ministers in their meeting had uh, agreed to part with all the buildings there. So with that recent building to the district court, we can have a reasonable space in the near future to construct a proper district court building. And in so far as CIA is concerned, the construction is all, it's almost finished. It's a fairly beautiful and big building and having four courtrooms. Only the thing is that the 
internal electric wires and the service connection is being awaited. And so far as long is concerned, as I've already mentioned, uh, the court buildings, the court rooms are housed in the office of the deputy commissioner. But there's a proposal for construction of a new district court building which is being pursued. Then in so far as the new district of Dhakir is concerned, steps have been taken for issuance of damage certificates. And a district, a district court at Rural Ralam Klan and for the judicial quarters complex at Hill Klan. Uh, these places are in fact very conducive. I have personally been there to see the place, so things have been worked out. And there's a full cooperation from the state machinery as well as the local people. Then in Champai, the construction of the district court complex at Dengsa phase 1 has been initiated. And likewise in Kozol, the procedural formalities are being undertaken for allotment of land at the Tafe Kozol, as recommended by the district land committee. So this is how the district judiciary, its offices, residential quarters are coming up of late. As we have already seen, uh, the separation of judiciary in the state has been only recent. But still, you can see that there's a lot of development. As a judge, as one of the judges of this high court, we travel a lot, like I said. So, I have noticed in other states, they also face similar difficulties. And in fact, compared, comparatively, we are quite better off. Most of the, few of the uh, judicial officers are still staying in rented houses. You think about it, it is not very conducive for a judicial officer to stay in a rented house and then pass judicial orders the next day. So that is why what is befitting for a judicial officer is a must. And in this direction, we have full cooperation from the state government in the state of Mizoram. I'm so happy to say that. And in the very near future, I think we're going to have enough quarters and enough courtrooms for for the courts to function properly and for the judicial officers to provide. Now, one important aspect uh, in recent times, or for the last many years now, throughout the country, is regarding e courts. I would like to spend a few time on this. The e courts integrated mission project is one of the national e-governance projects being implemented in the high courts and district courts of the country. The project has been conceptualized on the basis of the national policy and action plan for implementation of information and communication technology in the Indian judiciary by the e-committee of the Supreme Court of India. The e-committee was formed in 2004 to draw up the action plan for ICT enabled of the judiciary, with the Chief Justice of India as the pattern in chief come ad hoc chairman. The advancement in information and communication technology is perhaps the most spectacular and robust development or progress in the world today. Today we are bombarded with plethora of information through Facebook, WhatsApp, emails, Twitter, Instagram, etc. Therefore, in order to equip ourselves, the court must have sufficient machinery, hardware, software, applications, connectivity, etc. The e court projects was aimed at providing these necessary requirements. The e court projects in Mizoram was sanctioned around 8 crores during the second phase of the project. Under the project, a number of desktop computers equal number of UPS land connectivity were installed in all the districts with supporting UPS. Conferencing equipments were also provided for all the port complexes and some jails as well. A server is provided for each port complexes and the high board. 41 numbers of digital signature certificates and 20 numbers of smartphones for the use of NSTEP is also produced. And what do we mean by NSTEP? NSTEP means National Service and Tracking of Electronic Process. The court presides over a case 
but the process has to be served for that individual who is a who may be an accused or who may be a witness. So it's very difficult to get them attend the court. Instead, is one of those medium by which things have been uh, uh, has become easier. Now. Server is provided for each court complexes and the high courts. Then 41 numbers of digital signature certificates and justice clocks have also been completed, especially in the ISO district court and Lumley district court, and in the high court as well. Then besides this, land and WAN connectivity is being installed and completed in all the district courts. e saver Kendras has been set up to all the district courts and judicial officers from Mizoram. Are also equipped with laptops. Solar energy is provided to all district court complex using the 1.2 crore under the funds of the Ministry of Law and Justice, Government of India. Additionally, 1.2 crores was also approved by the Ministry of and New Renewable Energy, Government of India, through the Central Financial Assistance. In these matters, the court in Mizoram are striving for self-sufficiency in respect of these technological developments. Then apart from this, there is a case information system, that is CIS, which is linked and integrated with the National Judicial Data Grid, NJDG, which enables one to obtain ready information of cases from anywhere in India. New ventures like <coughs> NSTEP, which I mentioned, then just this, which is a mobile app meant for judicial offices, wherein they can have the details about their cases at the palm of their hand 24-7. These are a few steps which have been taken up uh, to improve the ongoing e-court project. Then another important aspect, as we know, is that courts in the country are going paperless. Arguments have been done over laptops and there are no files. The screen is before the judge and through the screen things are taken up in courtrooms. So for this purpose, one thing which is very important is the scanning and digitization. Now, under the 14th Finance Commission, two court project was made for scanning and digitization of records. This has also come has also come to this part of the country. Now in Mizoram especially, now as a pilot project Scanning was done in respect of the High Court, then the District Courts at ISO and the District Court in Dungle. But unfortunately, there is dearth of fund, which has been being, now being worked out. So far, the coverage is about 20%. Now, digitization doesn't mean that it's only those cases which are disposed. Even those pending cases which are on files are being digitized. So this is one another important step which uh, everyone should look forward to. Now we are in the digital world and this way you can you will not consume more space, you will consume less space and the, you, can, you, can, you can ensure that the records are maintained properly and are secure. Now, India being the world largest democracy, like we've heard, one of the pillars of the democratic setup is the judiciary. And to have a vibrant democracy, judiciary has to remain independent. An independent judiciary is important for preserving the rule of law and therefore most important facet of good governance. The judicial system has an important role to play ultimately in ensuring better public governance. Judiciary, as we know, is the guardian of human rights, protector of the constitution, and promoter of peace and cordiality. Now, unlike earlier times, now the customary way or of settling disputes or under the author authoritarian rule of the chief is no longer prevalent here, as we know. And especially in Mizoram, since the majority of the population 
as a common faith, that is, we are Christians. That is why most people do not want to litigate. Litigation rate, that is why it is slightly lower than compared to other states, especially the other non-existent states, wherein the customary law and some other practices are still prevailing. But in Mizoram, I don't think there is any such uh, thing that a dispute has been settled by customary law at this stage now. People have faith in the judiciary. So people go to courts. But why do they go to courts? It's a last resort. <coughs> they go to courts as a last resort. That is what I feel personally. Uh, have the experience of being on the other side of the on the bar as well as on the bench. So even from the government side also, similarly, litigation is quite under control, but this will not go on for a long time. So that is why we have to be prepared for what lies ahead. So, there is a need to sensitize the people in general, educate, spread legal awareness. We have the members of the bench at all levels, we have the bar members, and importantly, we have the Mizoram State Legal Service Authority, who is doing a wonderful job under the aegis and chairmanship of the Chief Justice of India, who is the veteran chief. So, a lot of projects, a lot of schemes have come under the State Legal Service Authority, which is then being benefited by the common masses. Now, as officer of the court, lawyers also have a duty to present your cases uh, in tune with what the law prescribes, what the constitution scheme provides. And likewise, the judicial officer or the judge of a high court has similar duty to perform. As a citizen of the country, we all have our own respective duties. Now, in, in recent development times, we cannot stay stagnant in one place. We have to move forward. And to move forward, we need all these uh, to be sensitized and to have the new technologies into our system. Now, to end the, my short idea, I'll go what Lord, Lord Denny has said. And I quote, if we never do anything which has not been done before, we shall never get anywhere. The law will stand still while the rest of the world goes on. And that will be bad for both. With these few words, I end my time here. Thank you very much. Jay. Thank you, Lord Chair, for the insightful and thought-provoking keynote address. Let me now invite one of the most popular musical band of Mizoram, One in Christ, for a special number. They will be presenting two songs, one after the other.
Sri Babu Kambhampati, Honorable Governor of Mizoram, to release her souvenir ceramic plate. Let me now invite His Excellency to kindly address the gathering. Honorable Justice Nelson Saylo, Judge Gowati Airport, Honorable Justice Marley Wampo, Judge Gowati Airport, Mr. C. Lal Ramkamuza, Senior Advocate, Advisor to the Chief Minister, Mr. Joel Joseph Benga, Registrar, Gavati Airport, and dear friends. I am extremely happy to be with you today as we celebrate the Platinum Jubilee of the Honorable Gavati High Court on completion of 75 years. The Gavati High Court, as of today, emerged from the High Court of Assam, which was established with effect from 5th April 1948. Initially, sittings were held at Shillong, but were shifted to Gavati from 14th August 1948. Later on, the Assam High Court came to be known as the High Court of Assam and Nagaland on the Constitu Constitution of Nagaland in 1963. The Northeastern Area Reorganization Act 1971 established a common high court of the five states of Assam, Nagaland, Manipur, Meghalaya, and Tripura, and the two union territories of Mizoram and Arunachal Pradesh called as the Gauhati High Court. From 20th February 1987, a common high court for the state of Assam. Nagaland, Meghalaya, Manipur, Tripura, Mizoram, and Arunachal Pradesh came into being. Apart from the principal seat at Gauhati, there are three outlying benches via Kohima Bench for Nagaland, Aizol Bench for Mizoram, and Itanaga Bench for Arunachal Pradesh. The Gauhati High Court occupied a unique position of being a common high court for all the seven states of Northeast India till 23rd March 2013, where separate high courts were set up for Meghalaya, Manipur, and Tripura. The Gauhati High Court administers justice in an area having enormous geographical and ethnic variations. The legal and judicial scenario is more Divergent laws govern the people of the region. I understand that the indigenous inhabitants of the hilly areas are primarily adopted to the conciliatory process rather than the adversary system. Some of the customary practices for settlement of disputes practiced in this area are expeditious and lasting. The Gauhati High Court is a unique one whereby a single institution exercises jurisdiction throughout the entire four northeastern states. The jurisdiction of the Assam High Court was extended to the sixth scheduled areas while Assam High Court jurisdiction over district council courts order 1954. The Aizol bench of the Gauti High Court was established on 5th July 1990. 
the high court building is under construction at the new capital complex Minako. Since separation of judiciary in Mizoram in 2008, the high court is doing superintendence over all courts and tribunals within Mizoram. I have been told that the residents of this state are peace loving by nature and as such there is less number of cases as compared to the other parts of the country. As we all know, the judiciary is one of the most important pillars in a democracy. The judiciary is expected to be the guardian of the constitution. Many times, the common people look to the courts as the last resort for justice. In our country, the judiciary has played an important role in guiding the legislature and the executive. I take this opportunity to highlight one issue which has plagued our judicial system, which is the inordinate, inordinate delay in pronouncing judgments in court cases. I am certain that all the stakeholders are doing their best to remedy this problem. I urge the judicial community to hasten up the process wherever possible so that justice is delivered to the needy and the earliest. As the legal maxim goes, justice delayed is justice denied. On the topic of today's seminar, regarding the way forward for the judiciary in Mizoram, I have been told that the e-courts integrated mission mode project is being pursued in our state. The advancement in information and communication technology is perhaps the most spectacular and robust development of progress in the world today. Today we are bombarded with plethora of information through Facebook, WhatsApp, emails, Twitter, Instagram, etc. In order to equip ourselves, the courts must have sufficient machinery hardware, software, applications, connectivity, etc. The e-course mission mode project is aiming at providing these necessary requirements. I have learned that phase 1 and phase 2 of the e-course project has been completed and that, the, and that the third phase is initiated. All these endeavors are made for creating a transparent environment and easily accessible information. In this way, I am happy that the Mizoram judiciary is taking initiatives to tap the full potential of information and communication technology. At the same time, we are equipping ourselves against the menace of cyber crime. I congratulate all the members of the judicial community in Mizoram on this Happy occasion of the Platinum Jubilee of the Honorable Gauvati High Court. Thank you. Jai. Thank you, Joel Joseph Deva, for a vote of thanks. It is with great pleasure that I take this opportunity to propose a vote of thanks on this momentous occasion to all of you who have been working tirelessly to make it possible for justice to reach each and every person in our country. Honorable Governor of Mizoram, the enthusiasm you showed from the very beginning for the celebration of this landmark in the history of our High Court and your willingness to join us today was inspiring and motivating. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Also, for your words of encouragement and guidance, we will keep it in our hearts always. Respected Madam Chief Secretary, respected Director, Director General of Police, Honorable Loka Gupta, Chairman Law Commission, Secretary Law Department, Deputy Commissioner Aizawal, Superintendent of Police, Senior Advocate Mr. Singh Hana, and students of the law college. Your presence here today 
is a reflection of the unflinching cooperation you have always extended for the judiciary to be able to carry out its mandate. I take this opportunity to say thank you on behalf of the High Court. To all the officers and staff of the District Court, working and retired, Mr. Thangi and Margaret Day, District and Session Judge Lulie, Mr. Bandani and Mohi, District and Session Judge Aizong, State Legal Services Authorities Officers, Mr. Bandani and Mohi. All of you provided us the assistance we needed, the manpower and the finances to make the occasion a success. Please accept the grateful thanks I would like to, to convey on behalf of the High Court. The members of the Mizoram Bar Association have been an integral part in organizing the program. They, got, they gave us their unstinting support. We could not have reached this milestone. It would not have been possible to render the services the High Court has been giving the people without the very capable assistance of our lawyers. I thank you on behalf of the High Court for your dedication and assistance. To the wonderful choir, one in Christ, which presented their enlightening songs today, I would like to say thank you very much. Finally, I would like to thank all the officers and staff of Isol Bench for the efforts they put in to make this occasion memorable. Thank you, one and all, and best wishes. Jai. Thank you, sir.